I've been turning down some escort clients lately because for me, it isn't just about the money. It's about what kind of man do I want in my space? What kind of man do I want to open to? And what kind of man do I want to welcome in my life? What kind of people do I want to value in my life? I've been changing my friendships out and changing my clients out. You know, it takes a certain level of competence to be a regular client for uh, to be a regular client of mine. You need to have basic social skills. You need to be able to keep an honest interaction with me, keep your appointments, keep your word, and not play bullshit games. Like, hey, can I see you now when you know I don't take now appointments? Well, I was just asking a question. Okay, there's the fucking door. Go ask your questions out the fucking door. Or, hey, um, I have... can. I didn't know I need to, I don't, I need to use cash. I thought I could use a credit card. I'm fine with guys using a credit card, but I don't want to see men who have to see me on a credit card. If you're that broke that you have to charge to see me, that's kind of a turn off. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to allow that anymore. I only want to see men who have the disposable income to pay for time with me. Otherwise, I don't want it because guys who have to see me with a credit card, they're always have some kind of um, unattractive qualities like being harried, being not so well dressed. Um, they're not on top of their game. And I don't want that in my space anymore. I am willing to forgo the money in order to up level my life. And I just have to trust that the universe will reward it. I'm going on trust. Also, um, if you're that broke that you need to use your credit card to see me, how do I know that you aren't going to contact the credit card company and reverse the charges? Now, that's only happened to me once, and that was just for a deposit, but it's a risk I can't afford to take. I need to trust you. I need to know that you're competent enough to be able to show up with the resources to be with me. Else, are you going to rob me, like reverse the funds? That's robbing me. That guy who asked for the money back was a piece of shit, but whatever, he's gone now. Um, so the gentleman said, oh, well, I've seen you before. You can trust me. I'd never seen him before. He said seven years ago. I haven't even been an escort for seven years. So he was lying. Now I have, now I'm supposed to see a guy who not only wants to pay with the credit card because he doesn't have the cash, but he's lied to me and told me that he's seen me before. This was going to be a $700 appointment. He, he paid me a deposit once before and canceled because he had COVID. So he really would have come. I'm sure he would have come, but I didn't like him lying to me because if you're going to lie to me to weasel your way into an appointment and you're going to manipulate me, how can I trust you? I don't trust you anymore. Now, remember, we women have a natural instinct for so many things, and it's so important. I'm, I'm making this video because I want people to know, I want men to know all the things we scan for and all the things that make you a threat or sexually repulsive to us, and there's so many. You might think, well, I'm paying this escort. She's going to see me. Well, the only escorts that are going to see you if you lie and pull shit like that are escorts who are disconnected from their bodies or have to dissociate or have no standards. And I, I'm, I'm very low volume, but I, I consider myself a high level escort because I stay embodied and I have standards. I have standards for myself and I have standards for my clients. And my intention is to always greet you with an open heart but you got to have some, you got to show up. You can't be lying to me and pulling shit. And if I accept clients like that, I'm going to lower my vibration. And right now I'm in the process of raising my vibration by using better boundaries in how I speak, being kind and weeding out people who are um, manipulative, controlling and lacking boundaries. So this is just on my own personal stuff and I'm willing to give up on money to do it because if I take money just if I if I fuck some guy just because he's got you know some resources for me or is giving me something uh I'm harming myself so I'm on my own self-improvement journey nonetheless uh this is what women have to think about because even in dating like if you lie to me about 
you know, that we've met before, how can I ever trust you for anything? Like, how can I ever trust that anything you're going to tell me is real after this? You know, how can I trust you to even pay me and not reverse the charges? Because you're willing to lie to me just to get your way. Like, that's very threatening. It feels very unsafe. So is um, just throwing out random words like, hey, I want to see you and then never following up. You know, there are certain qualities. It's hard for me to explain. I've tried to explain to men, even when I'm having sex with them, the quality of restraint is so attractive. Have Ladies, have you ever had sex with a guy and he's just being a little, a little too anxious for something to progress or move forward or a position or whatever? He's just a little too anxious. Like he's just, and you're like, I need a little more time. Let's slow down a little bit. But he can't help himself. He's so anxious. He's so turned on. If he can't, if he can restrain himself, oh my God, that is so freaking attractive. But if he can't, I really look down on this guy. And I, my body shuts down because he's not giving me the time and the space I need to open. The best guys in bed are the guys that have restraint. Like they're so turned on. They really want to get in there but they're going slow and taking their time. This is so hard to explain. Guys, this is what it's like so hard for guys to understand. They're like, I just want to get in there. Why don't you want to let me in there? Because my body, you can hurt me with that, with your body. Your body can cause me a lot of pain. So you have to get me relaxed and trusting and opening. And when you're so, I got to get in there now, I can't relax and trust because I'm guarded because it's going to hurt. Not because I don't like you, but my body just isn't quite ready. Remember, you're entering me. And it's the same thing with guys who are like, I got to see you now. I need to see you now. Are you available now? And it's like, that's kind of a turn off. High status men. And by high status, I mean, I don't mean money. I mean men who have accomplished something that they've built. They, they can plan ahead. That's very attractive to a woman. Um, if you can plan something ahead, if you can use restraint, if you have competence, effectiveness, willpower, if you can get a woman to be with you because you're being fucking honest, not by withholding your sexuality, not by lying and manipulating, not by like, how can I weasel my way to get in there now? If you're a high quality man, women will naturally want you. They will naturally want you. That is a fucking byproduct. You're not developing yourself to be a high value man just to get some woman who can abandon you, no. Because if you're a high value man, that woman may not want you, but lots of other women will. Those qualities of competence, effectiveness, willpower, restraint, perseverance, determination, physical fitness. Your physical fitness says everything about your restraint already to me. Those qualities are going to make you more effective at your job going to make you feel better about yourself, lift your mood and your spirits. They're going to improve your life on all levels with your friends, at work, your health. And they're going to draw a lot of women to you. So if that woman doesn't want you, fine, next. That's how you have to look at it. You're doing it for you. And the women are a byproduct. But if you drop on any of those things, women are not going to want you because we feel either afraid of you, turned off, or repulsed. And the only women you're going to get are, um, if you do get women, they're probably going to be low-quality, traumatized women, I guess. I don't know. So it isn't just about the money. And I feel really bad for women who are in relationships with men where they're giving the men pity fox, obligation fox, or even escorts or um, non-privileged escorts. Uh, there's a term for that. Um, survival workers, I guess I'm going to say, that um, are having to uh, 
have sex with men just because they need the money. That's, oh, that's got to be the most horrible thing. Because, guys, it's not... It's not for us like it is for you. We have to actually feel safe and like you to enjoy the sex with you. Because if we don't, it's like, look at my face. It's like the most horrible experience. It's like um, eating a pile of shit while being punched in the stomach. Let me put it that way. Having sex with a man that I don't want to have sex with is like eating a pile of shit while being punched in the stomach. Because... Uh, it's first of all, it's emotionally and mentally repulsive. And because of that, I'm not going to enjoy it and I'm going to enjoy it even less. So I really want men to get this. And the best book to help you understand a lot of this and what women really want is the book Mate. One more thing. American men often have difficulty with proper dress. European men don't suffer from this disorder. If your beard is unkempt and your dress is big and baggy, you look like you're socially inept. Like, it's just gross. Um, every man should have a properly fitted suit, even if it's just a $300 suit at Men's Warehouse, and wear some leather shoes on a date. Show the woman that you actually care about how you look. I mean, there's so many things. If I see a guy who's dressed who's not dressed well, I don't want to go out with him. I don't want to be seen in public with some disheveled looking guy. Yeah, I'm so laid back. I wore flip flops on my date. Well, you look like you don't give a shit and you look like you're not groomed. And if you can't even take care of yourself, I don't ever want to be near you. And now you make me look bad because you look like a disheveled mess. That's how it appears to women. European men have a much better sense of style. Uh, just wear a properly fitted shirt. Even if your belly is big, make a, get pants that fit over your belly. Put on a belt, put on some leather shoes, and look like you give a fuck about yourself. Also, guys, keep your apartment clean. When I look at guys' YouTube videos, I check out their background. And for some of these guys, I'm like, I don't know how any women would even want to come over here. Make your home a place where a woman would want to go. And see, guys don't realize that this stuff matters to us. This stuff matters to us. Why would I want to have sex with a guy who's just got some mattress on the floor and bright lights? Like, that is such a turnoff. Like, a guy wouldn't care. He's like, I have a woman. I don't even eat the freaking mattress. This is why understanding women helps you be successful. But having a nice home helps you live in a better space. And I'm sorry that your parents didn't teach you that. I can guarantee you my sons learned all of this stuff. Maybe because I'm from Germany and I paid attention to all that stuff. But a nice home is a place that's comfortable for you where you can invite your woman. There are so many great tips in that book, Mate. But everything I'm reading, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I wish every man in every world, every man would know this stuff. Because you would not give up on women if you were doing this stuff. Because you won't get every woman, but you'll get enough. And look at me. I do all the stuff that I think women should do and I have nothing going on. Do you know how many um, dating prospects I've had for a boyfriend in nine years? Fucking zero. Yeah, I've hooked up with some guys. I've gone on one date with a guy here and there. I've never gone on. I went on two dates with one guy. I never even fucked that guy. Usually I just go on one date. I don't have any dating prospects because men aren't doing the shit that they need to do to make me want them. That's what it is. If men would just do the shit that they need to do to be attractive, like be fit, wear decent fitting clothes, I would find lots of men to date. This guy I went on the date with twice was actually my age. It was a few years ago. And I noticed after lunch when we walked back to the car, I was embarrassed to be seen with him in public. There was one man I went to dinner with. He wanted to go on a beach walk with me on the next date. And I didn't want to go because I didn't want to be seen with him in public. And I questioned myself for that. But yeah, I absolutely want to be with the guy that I'm proud to be seen with in public. So if you got this big belly and baggy clothes, like, no, I don't want to be. If you're going to embarrass me in public, I don't even want to go out with you. And I'm not even attracted to you. See what I mean? And there's no way I'm going to fuck you if I'm embarrassed to be seen with you in public. <laughs> you know? But a guy is like, 
I don't care what you look like. You got some curves. I want to get in there. So that's why women are the gatekeepers of sex. Because when we're the gatekeepers, we are requiring you to step it up. And that's why I feel bad for that woman, Lauren Smith Fields, I believe. A beautiful African-American woman in New Jersey, I think, who f was found dead after having a bumble date. I don't think he meant to kill her. I, I think it was an accident. She was overdosed on fentanyl. She They had messaged a few days on bumble, and then she invited him straight over. Uh, he was a white guy, very well-mannered. The police questioned him and said he was a nice guy and let him go. They didn't even investigate the crime scene. A month later, they were still the used condom in the trash can, like they didn't investigate, so it's all over the news now. But the point being, there are women like Lauren who are trusting, kind women who invite men over, and this is why I'm making this video, ladies, too. You can't be that easy. You've got to have standards for these guys. Any man worth fucking is a man who's going to meet you first in public. Meet you first in public, for sure, at the very minimum. Because the only men that are going to come straight over, you know, every man has got enough money to take you out for a cup of coffee or a drink. Or even dinner at, you know, um, a chain restaurant. If he wants to come straight over, his intentions are bad. He wants to just fuck you. And who knows where that's going to lead. You don't even know him. Or he wants to hurt you in some way. He wants to use you for his benefit. Because every man who respects a woman will want to meet with her in public because he wants to, her to feel safe. And he wants to prove that he's safe. And he wants to be seen with her in public. No decent man will ever want to come straight over to your house. That is a fucking red flag. That is a fucking red flag. Never do that. All, and I will say, I hooked up with a lot of guys. I always met them for coffee because at that time to me, I wasn't worried about my physical safety, but I was worried about self-respect. A self-respecting woman does not just invite a man straight over. Even when I was first doing my escort business, I would meet men out in public before I invite them over. Now I do enough screening first, and I don't have men coming over here at night. I think it's disrespectful to have stray men coming over at night. I mean, what will the neighbors think? And I think what will the neighbors think is a good question to ask because it keeps you on top of your proper game. You know? I mean, a man... We need to require more of men, ladies, and the things we require of them are not things that are going to plunder them, but things that make them better. We need to demand things of men that make them better. We need to make them work a little bit for the dates, plan the dates, put in some effort, show their competence, their willpower and effectiveness, and see what they can actually do. Men love a challenge. They love the you know, what is it, the tough mutter things and the boot cams and like physical challenge of lifting more weights. But when it comes to getting your pussy, you're just going to lay back and spread your legs. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got to be harder to get than a tough mutter. Okay. Yeah, that's going to end it with that. You have to be harder to get than a tough mutter.